Father, to say thank you. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your great, great grace. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to join together again with our brothers to share and teach the word of God. Father, we thank you for your many choice blessings upon our life, how you've kept us, how you provided for us, God, how you've healed our bodies, Father God. We thank you, Father, that we're your children. You know us each by name, Father God. We're just that special to you, Father. Father, I ask that you would be with us on today on this Zoom call, Father God. Touch every heart, touch every mind, Father God. Feed us the word of God that we need to be fed on today, God, and so that we can go out and share with the dying world of what our hope is, which is in Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for the teacher on the day, Pastor Daryl, God. We thank that you open up his mouth. Father God, all of us today. Bless that you're blessed to be with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. And at this time, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, read a scripture from Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. So, steadfast mind, you keep in peace. Oh, there it is. Um, we keep in peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God, you have an everlasting rock. <clears throat> and at this time, we'll move on to uh, our youth pastor and have comments of, uh, from our youth review. Pastor John. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Um, mm -hmm. this, this week, we discussed giving it a, a proper offering to the Lord. So we talked to, we were in Leviticus 22 a little while. Um, and we talked about how um, the offering was without spot. So we uh, that was the that was the the content of the discussion. All right, thank you so much. And at this time, I'm going to give you a review of the Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting. And um, as you know, uh, we meet on the first and third Wednesdays, and we we pray. For uh, for everyone, and we also pray for the ones that you uh, sent us on um, the, the text and the group text. But we, any request that you make, we pray for you and we call you out. We call out your name to the Lord as we pray. We pray for your families and we pray for your friends. And uh, we have we had one hospital contact prayer, maybe two this week. And um, we just want you to know that we want you to continue asking for prayer if you need it for your request, that we honor your request. And uh, that's my report for the women prayer meeting. Thank you. And at this time, we're going to ask for a song on the direction of Sister Cynthia Ladd. I can't hear you. You can't hear. Okay. Uh, that that was Sister Cynthia Smith, and she was saying Robin is going to sing. I think. I'm sorry, Sister Cynthia Smith. I said, okay, Smith. Thank you. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge. Beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoice to see that fountain in his And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my 
wash all my sins away. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Thank you so much for that song, Sister Robin. And at this time, we're going to welcome our um, visitor. I'm sorry. We're going to turn it over into our teacher, Elder Daryl Lab. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning. Amen. Thank you, Robin, for singing my favorite hymn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, my, that's my favorite. I, I feel so good. Uh, but I want to talk about something else right now. We were at church. <laughs> I just think about the prophet uh, Zechariah said, in that day, there should be a fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and for uncleanness. Right? It's just great <laughs> that God provided a fountain for us um, for sin and uncleanness, uncleanliness. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, uh, today is kind of an interesting day, too, for the lesson. I just realized this morning that as we are approaching um, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, that this verse, uh, actually, if you read the rest of the chapter, it looks like the last verse that he talks to these believers about really how to live. And then we, when we started in Hebrews, it was mostly all doctrine uh, up to chapter 12, and that's when we concluded. And then chapter 11, chapter 13, it was about just how to live. Everything was just practical living, how to live this life, what to say, what to do. Uh, uh, let brother your love continue. Don't forget uh, those who are in bonds. You know, remember your leaders. Um, you know, it just things that we, how we're supposed to live. Uh, we talked about sacrifice of praise. What we're supposed to say with our mouth. How we're supposed to live. Sacrifice ourselves. Uh, and it's constant reminding us to do how to just live. And there's so many things there. And, and if we think about how, uh, I mean, just even with children, you may tell children a lot of directions, uh, instructions on, on how to play, like go play in the yard. But then you say, don't play in the street. And then you say, if you cross the street, look both ways. Uh, and if you cross the street, don't run, walk. And uh, so you have a lot of instructions there. But as children get older, uh, they go outside, you just say, be safe. You just sum it up and say, be safe. And that includes a whole lot of things. And so as we grow in, in Christ, there may be a lot of things. And we look at uh, Hebrews 13, he says a lot of things, what to do. Uh, and then we get to verse 17, looks like he just summed it up. He just says, look, <laughs> you know, obey and, and submit. You know, and, and just like, and it sums up everything that we've talked about. So if we could get, you know, verse 17 down, you know, clearly, uh, you know, in our hearts and in our minds, then we will have all of this teaching, practical living, you know, in a nutshell, and, and won't have to worry about anything. Uh, and, and many of you may know that uh, even in business, when you get your reviews and your boss may give you a lot of instructions when you're a lower level. You know, but as you go higher in the ranks, they don't give you a lot of instructions. They say, hey, just do right for the company, whatever. Okay, whatever that means. I mean, so as you grow in Christ, don't expect a lot of uh, small details on what to do. Um, and the, and the laws are few anyway. There's a lot of laws in the Old Testament, but here's the law of love. You know what love is? And if you love, like Pastor Bobby talked about, <laughs> I think it was last Sunday on Facebook, if you love your wife, you're not going to cheat on your wife, plain and simple. You don't have to say, you know, if, you don't have to say don't do it, just love. And if you love, you're going to do a whole thing. If you love your wife, you're going to do things for her. You don't have to say, I'm going to buy her a car, I'm going to buy these things. But if you love her, those things just goes inside, it goes along with it. So as we look at uh, today's lesson, uh, and if we get to what the writer is saying, it's actually a summation. Of, of a lot of things he's talked about already. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a culmination of things that he's already taught. And so when we look at it, we don't have to get tied up on the specific nuance of that, uh, what he's saying, but understand it's still, it's a combination of everything else he said and uh, we don't forget those things. Uh, uh, today's lesson is interesting from the standpoint too that uh, it, it looks a lot like there's a, uh, uh, 
a review or um, there's going to be some uh, uh, an account given on on how we live this life plain and simple and if we think about it from that standpoint if we know that there is going to be a record read about anything then we we operate a little differently so i want to jump right into the lesson and we'll see how far we get through today's lesson and again i'm not really excited about completing the book of hebrews i mean i'm really sad this morning because i was looking ahead again and i realized this is the last real verse of all the doctrinal teaching and, and, and the practical living part and i think man it's kind of making me sad a little bit you know, I don't know where we go from here, but we'll take our time. We'll probably spend more than one Sunday on, on this verse, though. So we're not going to rush through it. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now. And that's a lot of talking uh, <laughs> to start the lesson, but we'll start. All right. Um, all right. So anyway, so today's lesson, one thing I want to pick up off the introduction slide is that there is some things that the writer says and what he says today are the things that's going to give us an advantage. Um, that's going to be advantageous to us uh, as we run our race and we want to win. And uh, he's given us the tip here on how to do things that will be advantageous to us. So here's the uh, lesson text. Uh, it's one verse, Hebrews 13 and 17. If we could all read that together, please. If you come off mute, uh, let's read that together, then go back on mute right afterwards. Uh, let's all read it together. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, and as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So we see the words here in the Greek uh, for obey, uh, pytho, which means persuade, trust, to have confidence, uh, them that have the rule. We've seen this word a few times, hagaiomai, and it's the leader or uh, account or account of steam or have the rule over. So in this context today, it is it's certainly the ones who are the leaders here. Uh, submit yourself, pyko, it means to resist no longer give way, yield to authority. So when we say submit yourself, it's you yield, yielding to authority and you're resisting no longer, <laughs> you just give way. Uh, watch, uh, and the Greek means sleepless, uh, keep, uh, must give, uh, as render, whatever that means, and then account, uh, we've seen that word, love goes quite a few times, and it's something said, something gathered in the mind and expressed in words. Uh, joy, we've seen that word quite a few times. Uh, and it's a word in Greek is glad means gladness. Grief is means to sigh or to groan. And then unprofitable in the Greek, um, the word means gainless, uh, pernicious, you know, harmful or hurtful. So those are the words. You can look at those. Uh, some of those we've seen before, and some of those may be the first time we've seen those. Um, but we'll go forward because we we'll probably see those again. So uh, where I want to start today is at the end. So the, the writer says the things you could do, uh, he gives some instructions, but then he says, for that is unprofitable for you. All right, so there's some things you could do here. I um, mean, you could end up in a way where it's, it's not to your advantage, or you could end up in a way that it is to your advantage. So what the writer's saying, he's given us a key to how at the end of all said and done, this thing works out to your advantage. And so, but what he says is, uh, there's, there's an account given, there's someone who's giving an account uh, on what you've done, how you've lived, uh, what you've done here, and you want that person to be happy or to be able to do that with joy and not with grief, because if they do it with joy, the corollary of that is that it's to your advantage, it's proper for you. What he says, if they do it with grief, uh then it's not profitable for you it's unprofitable for you 
So I like to look at it uh, just, just working backwards here. And that is, if you uh, think of this as a, as a review, as a performance review, those of you who've ever uh, been employed and had a boss that gave you a review, or those who've had employees and you gave them a review, you know, sometimes it's best to know uh, uh, when you're given a review, you know, what exactly happened. And if something is, if you're getting a review, it's also good to know exactly what, what they're talking about. Uh, so if you know that you want to have your review to be done well, you want when your boss give your review to be done well, then you'd like to know, okay, I want them to say I did X, Y, and Z great. And I'm glad to know that that's going to be on my review. Uh, what, uh, what, what's important here is that if, if you want them to say you did X great, then you have to at least know what it takes to do that. And so working backwards, and this is like uh, this term, uh, a lot of companies use this thing uh, where they go, um, uh, when they start a new project, and, and I've written some of these before, when they say, okay, there's a new project. And then the first thing they say is, hey, write a press release for this project. Amazon does stuff. Write a press release. A press release? Yeah. So I'm going to write a press release about something that hasn't happened yet. And so I say, okay, hey, we introduced this new technology and the cover's all happy and people are saying it's the best thing since sliced bread and the cost is attractive and all these things. None of this has occurred yet. And you write this press release like it's actually in the newspaper and you send it out to everyone internally and they say, this is great, but this thing is not going to happen to three years from now. But what it does, it says, hey, there's going to be a press release in three years and this is the way it's going to be written. So now everything we do day to day, as we try to figure out how to work this project, we already got the press release done. So now it shapes what we're doing going forward on everything we're doing. So it's good to know how you want to end up. So the writer says, look, you want your account, the person, your leader to give you this account, but you want them to do it with joy. Okay, if I want them to do it with joy and not with, you know, a sigh or a groan or with grief, then what does it take to make sure that's the case? So the writer paints a picture here, really, uh, of the press release. Hey, your leader's going to write this thing about you, give this account, and it's going to be with joy. That's going to be good for you. And okay, so, so what does that take? Well, then it means, okay, what exactly uh, do I need to do? Well, we would think of it like, uh, what's required of me? You know, what is my job? You know, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Now, we've talked a lot in Hebrews 13 about, and just even in the, in the verses before this, we talked about the things that we could do that are pleasing to God. That's great. Okay. Uh, and with these sacrifices, remember this, with these sacrifices, God is well pleased. So we're on the right track here. So we're doing the things, we're saying the things that are pleasing to God. We're being good. We're being kind. We're, we're communicating. We're sharing. We offer in the sacrifice of our praise, uh, of our lips. We give them praise to God. And these sacrifices are pleasing to God. So now we got it going pretty well now. So now we say, then the writer says, obey them to have a rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your soul, as, for they watch for your soul as they must give account that they may do it with joy and with grief. So I'm thinking, okay, it, it is a review. It, it's, it's, it's an appraisal. So what is it, as, what, what's required of me? There's going to be a review. There's going to be an appraisal. So what's, it, what's on it? And because I really want to know what's going to be on it. So if we have an idea of what's required of us, if we had a, have an idea of our job as a believer, then let's go do that in a way that it will end up profitable for us because that account given about us in this life and how we live and how we ran our race will be given uh, with joy. And, and the writer is very clear here when he says, you know, I know sometime in business, I've, I've had a boss just his, tell me, hey, go write your review and then come to me and I'll give it to you. Well, I like that because I wrote my re review very well. And I got great remarks, you know, and of course they changed it a little bit, but the reality is I like the fact I got to write my review. But this one says, um, 
your leaders, uh, the one that's the rule of you, they're the ones that can give the account. So it's not you necessarily doing it, but you can do your own self-assessment as you go along the way to make sure that you are uh, where you're supposed to be. And I think that uh, in, in a large sense, uh, that's one thing that um, we, we probably, I probably don't do enough of. We need to do our own uh, assessments as, as well to know are we still where we're supposed to be? Are we progressing as much as we should be progressing? If I look at my own life from this month to last month and from this year to last year, have I grown? And if I'm stagnant, then something is, something is wrong. We should constantly be growing in grace, constantly be growing in faith, constantly growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to constantly be growing. And that's our job to, to, to check ourselves. And the writer is very clear, talking to these Hebrew believers in 13, making sure they own the right track, make sure that they, they, they are progressing and they are growing uh, in faith and, and in the Lord Jesus Christ and continue to run their race and run it to win with all the determination that they have in their heart. And so the writer is clear too here when he's talking about, when he talks to them about, uh, you know, submitting yourselves uh, and to whom, whom that is, because it says to those that has the rule over you. And so looking at the end, there's some things we need to do uh, to make sure that um, well, at the end, uh, our account will be given with joy. And, and that's just, and I don't know what that means, but it's good for us. And I, I'm, I don't know what that means, but it is good for you. How? I don't know. But the writer is very clear. He says, if the account is given with grief, with a moan, or with a sigh, then it's not profitable for you. And I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had reviews in my life and my boss, I had a boss said, hey, Daryl, it's time for your performance review. He said, okay. He says, I'm kind of running short on time. Let's go, be, let's just go have it over lunch. Oh, this is gonna be a good review. We can go have it over lunch. And I had some boss, he said, come on in. And then he closed the blinds in his room and his office kind of dark all of a sudden. Ah, that's probably not gonna be good, you know? But others say, hey, let's just do it on the way someplace to the park. Let's do it on the way home. You know, that's great. And I like it when, reviews are given with joy and it means that i've done what i was supposed to do and so all of us have that opportunity it's in our hand, it's in our hands to be able to live this life do exactly what this writer is saying he lists a lot of things here but then he sums them up and it's important for us to know that uh you know god has put uh under shepherds over us uh we do have leaders and uh, and how we respond and, and, and to them is how we actually respond to God. And sometimes we kind of miss that. You know, the way you treat uh, your leader that God put over you is the way you treat God. And, and so you can't divorce those two things. And so the writer says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. I mean, if we actually thought, think, stop and think about our souls of being watched by someone who's God put over us, I mean, I could see taking care of my body or making sure I have food or make sure I get a ride to work, but they watch for your soul. Things are going to live forever, eternity. They watch for your soul. So it's very important for us to know that the person who's watching over our souls is the one that's going to give in the account for us. And so we should... Uh, Make it, a, it should make it a lot easier for us uh, to obey and uh, them that have the rule over us because of the, what they do. Now, I have an example here that I put in a lesson um, about um, uh, that. Um, oh, I'm not getting that yet. But in the, um, <laughs> this, uh, I have this uh, on the next slide. You see uh, on the left side, I have this review. Uh, actually, like a, a sample. Uh, a, uh, employee uh, performance review form. And it's different from the one that I sent out in the original uh, preview. And I like this one because it lists a lot of different things like quality of work, attendance and punctuality, reliable dependability, communication skills, all these things that a boss would normally judge you on. And I'm not saying that this is the same thing. I'm saying it's actually not the same thing that we would be, you know, judged upon. But there are some things. Uh, but those things are uh, uh, far short, short of this. It's not like really what you do 
and, and I did make a point to say this does not have anything to do with salvation. Your question about salvation is if you're not saved, it's not, you know, did you give to your brothers or did you help people out or did you give to the poor? And that's, that's not it. You know, salvation is really what did you do with Jesus Christ? You know, God provided a remedy, a, a savior for, for, for your sins. Uh, that same um, uh, song that Robin was singing, that there's a fountain filled with blood. There is something that's paid for your sins already. So if you have not accepted Christ as your savior, then again, this lesson doesn't mean anything to you because it's not talking to you. It's talking to those who are believers, those who accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Because right now, if you haven't accepted Christ as your savior, you have one question. That is, what are you going to do with Jesus Christ? What are you going to do with Calvary? What are you going to do with a savior that God provided for you? Now, your job is to accept him. And now once you accept him, that's that's it now. That, that, that's your salvation part. The rest of this, now if you didn't reject this good, now as a believer, these things are, would apply to you. So for us, then we have to really know uh, what things are we gonna be um, you know, judged on. And it's not about being salvation, but it's more about you know, uh, rewards on how you live this life. And we wanna do everything that we, uh, uh, that God has purpose and plan for us to do in this life. And so I used to have this, um, uh, think of the things we do in this life. I used to have uh, one of the guys, uh, when I was in business one time, uh, some of his employees, he worked for me and they had people who worked for him, but his employees would come to me and say, hey, we have a problem with our boss because he keeps saying the things we don't understand and he just smiles. And what he was saying was, you're going to read about it. And they said that, he always says that whenever we mess up and we don't know what he means. And so I didn't know what he mean either, meant either. So I asked him, hey, what do you, what do you mean? People came to complain to me, telling me that you always say you're going to read about it whenever something, this in a warehouse or something happens. They say you're going to read about it. He says, oh, uh, that's what my boss used to tell me. And he's going to give me his account. But he says that that means it's going to be on your performance review at the end of the, end of the year. So it, not when they do something well. It's only when they do something bad. They get this like, uh, you know, this threat. Oh, you're gonna read about that again, and so it always show up on their their record uh, at the end. And so when we stop and think about that, uh, we're gonna read about it. The things that we're gonna read about are the things that 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 we doing right, and we're gonna get you know credit for it. I mean, so we, it's not just all this bad stuff we will admit it. So we think about how to live, and the writer's not putting any threats here. He just said, look. Let brotherly love continue. Remember those who are in bonds. Remember your leaders. You know, do good, communicate. These are all the things we want you to do. And that's going to be an account given. And we want to be with joy and not with grief. So we can keep doing those things. And so, and it's, and, and it, he's made it still easy for us to get, yeah, and we talked before uh, about how the good things we have that we do in life, God's already ordained those anyway. So even all the good we're doing, you know, he's still going to give us credit for those things, even though he set it up and made it all possible. I mean, so it's, it's a great setup. And I like the way the writer is, uh, the way he, he summed it up here, because it's so assuring and, and gives us so much confidence that, that we're winning our, winning our race and we're going to win this race. And we are going to have some rewards associated with it, because that's the way God has already structured it. Our job is just to basically read from my script. And, and do what we're supposed to do. And it's not anything hard, anything grievous, because he set the whole thing up. And so it's important to know, in this last, you know, really piece of doctrine here, uh, he just says, obey them and have a rule over you. I mean, you gotta know who the leader is. It works well for us. And, and this is not, I'm not your leader, but it works well. They watch for your soul. The things you're gonna have living forever, they watch for you. And, and did we go over the word for it? I don't think it went the word for it, right? Uh, have we got to it? Maybe not. Okay, I'll go back here. All right, so we got to know who, who, who exactly the leader is. <clears throat> so I have an example from um, uh, the Old Testament. And is, that, uh, is it? Yeah, okay, great. <clears throat> so look at this. Now, the word watch <clears throat> in the uh, Greek means sleepless or to keep awake. Now, um, it says your leader the ones who have the rule over you, they watch for your soul. And watch means sleepless and keep awake. So you stop and think about all the times you're sleeping at night, all the times you're not fasting, all the times you're not praying. You have to know that God has appointed someone with the responsibility 
to watch for your soul. Someone's always praying for you. Someone always checking on you. Someone's always going to God for you on your behalf. Now that has to be a great feeling to know that you're always being covered. Even when you didn't pray, even when you didn't, you know, do what you're supposed to do. They have someone there calling your name out all the time. That's, that's the responsibility that God gave someone and they are watching for your soul and they can have to account for these folks. So you can walk around confidently sometimes, even when you think you shouldn't be walking around confidently because someone is watching for you. So even when you're messing up, it's amazing how someone's always, you know, interceding for God on your behalf. And he says, basically, obey them and that rule. These, these, these are your leaders that God put over you. Now, who are these leaders? And we've talked before about um, uh, uh, those that had the rule over you. When we talk about those that have the rule over you, when, when, when do we talk about them in this passage? What, what do we talk about? Anybody remember? Remember them to have the rule over you? Anybody remember that? Nobody remember? Okay, come off mute. Say it. In, in the same chapter. Verse 7. Verse 7. Can you read verse 7? Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God, who okay. faith. That's good, that's good. Okay, so we're not talking about just somebody who just, you know, oh, this is your new person who's in charge. We're talking about the ones who are teaching you the word of God. That one that God put up, that your leader is speaking God's word to you. That's the one. So when you say, when we say obey them, which we talk about in a few minutes, when we talk about obey them, what are they telling me? They're telling you the word of God. And what's the word of God? All the things we just talked about, uh, brotherly love continues, sacrifice, pray, everything we talked about, communicating and sharing and doing good, and remember those who are in bonds, all this is, this is the word of God. So it's kind of summed up now into just obeying what they've taught because they are teaching you the word of God, and they are speaking God's word into your life. So uh, the writer says that these person who's given watching, the ones who really watching for your soul to make sure you get everything you need to get from God, that person watching for your soul, make sure your soul has the word of God and it received the word of God. They're gonna have to, something said, gather, they're gonna have to put words together on you. I don't know how that even looks. I, I don't even know, know the form for that. I'm just saying what the, what, what the, what the uh, writer says in Hebrews. And how does it look in real life? And I put a passage in here uh, from Exodus, just seeing how, uh, for this one example, and it's, it's, it's self-explanatory in the example uh, about how, how God uh, related to the people through the one that God had placed over them, the one who had to rule over them, who the one who actually was watching for their souls. And so if you read uh, in Exodus chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 14, I'm gonna read it. And, and it's about Moses who is the ruler over them and the children of Israel. Um, and just look how it works. Um, Exodus 14 and 10, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. That's, that's verse number 10. The children of Israel cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, uh, now they get smart with Moses. And they said unto Moses, <clears throat> because there was no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Now keep in mind now, they, they, they being nice talking to the Lord, but then they're going to be, you know, smart out going to be talking to, to Moses uh, over them. Wherefore has thou dealt with thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians, that we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you this day for the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, that's what Moses said. And then verse 15, 
Uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore crieth thou unto me, speaketh to the children of Israel that they go forward? And that's the answer, and they crossed the Red Sea. Now, the question here that I have is that um, verse 10, uh, Israel cried, the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And in the rest of these verses, uh, which verse has God answering back to the children of Israel who cried out to him? Okay, right. There isn't a verse. There is no verse where God talks back uh, and responds to the children of Israel uh, when they cried out to him. But in verse 15, the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore cried thou unto me? Now, if you look at these same verses, uh, where does Moses cry out to the Lord? Uh, again, you're right. There is no verse where he's crying out to the Lord in this passage. But so when Israel cried out, the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, God told Moses, and it's Moses, wherefore you're crying out to me. So when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, that's when God responded, he responded to the leader. And then he said, speaking to the children of Israel, that they go forward. So when we look at this passage, people cry, people pray to the Lord. And God does respond. God does give the answer. But God gave the answer here through the leader to give to them. So if they didn't like the leader or didn't want to hear what the leader has to say, then they wouldn't have gotten what God had given them. They just would have missed it. And so the only point from that I want to make is that uh, we pray and God gives us answers all the time. Sometimes we, while you're praying, God gives you answers. You know exactly what it is. And then sometimes you're going through something or praying for something or maybe not even praying for yet. And God gives the answer for you, even if you didn't even know you had a question, he gives it to the one who he's put to have the rule over you. And so now you get an answer to a question you didn't, didn't have. Now you get an answer to a question that you did have, but you didn't get it. Well, it's a good thing that you tuned in that day. It's a good thing that you showed up in church that day. It was a good thing that you were listening to your leader that day because God responded to your cry. God responded to your prayers and he delivered the answer, not to you directly, but he responded through the one who is watching for your souls. That's their job, to watch for your souls. And then God gave the answer. And your job then is to listen. So when the writer says, obey them to have a rule of you, it's very clear that's for your own good. That's so that it that's so it'll be profitable for you. That's so it would be in my best interest. So don't think that anybody else is getting any benefit here. The writer saying how you could do things to benefit yourself. I don't know. I don't know. It's not much clearer than that, but I like helping myself. And if you like helping yourself, then the writer saying here's something you could do to, to help yourself. Any questions or comments, jump right in. All right, so um, the writer says, obey them that have the rule over you. So now it goes back to these things. Now, obey is a, um, is a very, um, no one likes to worry obey uh, as much anymore. And I've heard, I've gone to weddings where they've taken it out of the wedding vows. I promise I'm not gonna obey. Well, okay, get all that, okay, fine. Uh, no one likes the word obey, all right. It's politi politically incorrect these days. But when it comes to God's word, uh, yeah, yeah, obey. Just trust and obey. Yeah. Does anyone disagree? Okay, right. No one disagrees. So obey, in this sense, um, the word is pytho in the Greek, and it means to persuade a trust to have confidence. So now just looking at the word, other than what we know it to mean, to obey, what does it convey in the meaning, and how does it look in real life? So when it says obey them to have the rule over you, now, this is like a summation here at this point. This should be easy for us to do. And it goes beyond um, uh, the, the uh, Ephesians 6.1, you know, children obey your parents. It's a different word, but it, that word is already covered, uh, hupakuo, and, uh, and we say submit. So don't think you don't have, that it doesn't mean that either. It does mean that. But beyond just obeying and following instructions, the word obey meaning persuade, to trust, to have confidence. 
Now, what does that mean to anyone here other than doing what they say do, tell me to do? What, what would that mean? No one? Does not mean anything? No. Yeah, confidence in that person that they're telling you the right thing, that they have good intentions towards you. Can I say that one more time? Because it was kind of blurry. I'm saying you have to trust that person and, and believe that they have good intentions towards you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah, trust in that person and believe they have good intentions of them. And that's really what it means. So when we get down to it, and um, but you have, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever seen when people say, I need to, um, um, or even like in the men in the military, for example, and I've never been in the military, but if they say, hey, let's, uh, let's go take that hill. Okay, y'all go up that hill. Okay, that's obeying. But if someone says, I, you know, we, say, I, we need to take that hill, and, but, it, but if everyone rallies around it to trust what they're saying is, is things we all need to do, then they're gonna end up rallying the troops and get everybody behind them. So it's to put your confidence in your leader, where you just get behind, Everything they're doing, just get behind, just just make it happen. And it's because you trust them and you are persuading, persuade, maybe like persuade other people, get get everyone involved and you put your confidence in them. And not to, well, they didn't tell me, so I don't know how it's gonna work. No, they don't have to speak directly to you at this point. Obey means to trust and get behind them and have the confidence in it. So as a way for to live as believers, as the way we have confidence in our leaders and we're backing them at every turn. So the writer is saying, here's how you can make it good for you. Get behind, trust, put your confidence in your lead, get behind them, push, pull, do whatever, but rally around it, rally around them, because these are the ones that are watching for your soul. And, and it's more than just, you know, I'm doing what they tell me to do and that's it. No, how about doing everything that you, that, that you want, that they want to be done, that they need to be done and have confidence and trust in them. So that's what, Really, the right thing, we gotta go a step beyond just the, okay, this is what they told me to do, so I'm doing it. But they didn't say anything, so I didn't do anything. Well, you gotta go beyond that, because you already know a lot to do. God put things on your heart to do that you didn't hear in an audible voice. Um, and if God put that on your heart to do, then you need to do those things as well. That's more important <clears throat> than anything. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, <clears throat> The, um, the, the next one, and I actually want to, um, see 11.15. So what I want to do is I want to pick up with uh, Obey uh, again um, next time I go a little deeper, but uh, then I want to look at and submit. So you have, uh, you have some slides already. I'll send you these again, but because I made a couple of changes on them. But I want to look at uh, slide seven on Obey uh, deeper next Sunday, and I want to look at uh, submit as well because these are the two things that really uh, the writer just sums up uh, for for your view, and, and those things are obey and submit, and uh, so we're going to take those in a little deeper detail because those are the two things that he sums up uh, on how to make sure that things are going to be proper for us. So if you would um, uh, take the slides that I've sent. Just and, and look at these, the, those two words a little deeper. I'm gonna just cover both of those uh, in, in deep detail uh, next week. Uh, and let me get the last slide up here. Okay, yeah, so we do those two things. Uh, we're gonna wrap up um, that for next Sunday. And if there are any questions or comments, we do have a couple of minutes too for any, anything else you have to say. Anyone have any questions or comments, you can say those at this point. Uh, yes, I had a comment. Um, uh, when you were delineating that obey within mm -hmm. in the context of obeying your leaders had to do with having confidence and trusting mm -hmm. them I, it made me think of um, you know I think it's in Matthew where it says um, his sheep the sheep know his voice and another they will not follow right um, and I and I just bring that up in that it is um, a blessing when the leader 
is rightly handling or accurately handling the word of God because all leaders do not do that. Right. And um, it made me think of it because you said trusting and having confidence in that leader. So mm -hmm. you can do that because you know you have one that's accurately dividing or accurately handling the word of God and just wanted to bring that out because everyone doesn't have that, you know, and, and to really know that you, you have to know the word, which goes right back to what you said about um, all that we've looked at in Hebrews up until now has laid out for us what, you know, what's expected. So when it comes to that report, um, we already know what God has instructed us to do. So all of that kind of, kind of ties together. No, I, I think and that's it. I think it's an excellent, excellent point. And I think that is, that is the main, that, that is a, I don't say the main point, that is an excellent point. Uh, because uh, when, when the writer talks about the rulers, when he first mentioned those have rule over you, it's not just anybody, just because you signed up to be under somebody, somebody's over you, that kind of thing. It's those who are teaching you the word of God. And that, and you make that determination, that will tell you whether you're in the right place or the wrong place, period. And once you're in the right place under someone who's teaching the word of God, obeying them what are you obeying you're obeying what the word of god is it's, yeah it's, it's, it's easy then and because it's, it's nothing that he's telling me or she's telling me that's not in the word of god so we have to be in that place and that's that 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 is the prerequisite i think for all of this like you say is that those leaders who are teaching and and actually rightly handling uh the word of god not something else and, and that's what we that that should be our job at that point. And it's easy to do at that point. That's an excellent point. Um, any, anyone else? All right, so Carol. next, yes. Oh, it's D. I was just gonna say, just to piggyback on that, um, when I think about our leaders, so, you know, it's like we said, church, I got the mic, so I'm gonna talk about our leaders. <laughs> it's really easy to obey those when you see that they're leading, living the life before us. You know, because there are a lot of people that can teach the word, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're living the word. Right. It's like, I kind of like in the home, I can tell CJ, do this. Now, I may not be doing it, but I can tell him to do it. <laughs> so, uh, like coming from your dad and now being under your brother, it's easy uh -huh. to obey them. Amen. Truly, first of all, because God has told us to, but uh -huh. because we see the life that they live before us. Hey Amen. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. And I think uh, there are many of them on this call agree with you the same way. It, it, is, it does make it a lot easier. They don't have any question about, am I in the right place? <laughs> Do, uh, am I following the right person? Uh, uh, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's, that's an extra point, Dee. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, anyone else? All right. So, so next Sunday, Lars, we'll, we're going to take a... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So the people that that um you say that the leaders and what like that is that just if someone comes into your life and like you're talking to them and like clearly you guys are like you know supposed to talk or whatnot and then you they present to you situations and decisions they're making you say okay well blah blah and you start to go and tell them like you know what God's word says about that. Is that like, is that you like them being responsible for you? Or is that just like, you know, advice or random or what? Yeah, um, I don't, I, I think that, uh, I don't think that would be the same thing as this, because this is a, this is a, this is, this is God's you know, structure that he's set up. And so uh, all of God's sheep, you have a shepherd. Okay, that God put there. So you may get, uh, just like if you went to uh, 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 some conference and, and someone spoke the word of God, well, that's not the person who has to rule over you. That's the person who's watching for your soul. Just because they taught you the word of God, and I've learned from a lot of different people, but those are not the people that God put over me and they are responsible to watch for my soul. I, I just got a good word from them, but that's not the same thing. So this is, this is the structured environment for you and your leader that God had actually placed in your life over you that you have, uh, that they are accountable for you. Because I think it's in, uh, I think it's in Jeremiah when, when God asked uh, 
You know, where is, where is my flock, my, my precious flock? I mean, that, someone's going to have to answer that question. And it's not that person. But it's going to be the leader that God put over that flock. Where, where, where are my sheep? Where, where are they? Where are they? My people. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So question. So if God asked you where someone was, mm-hmm. would that mean that you would be responsible for them? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, uh, unless God specifically told you someone th- that you are accountable for someone. I, I think it'd be very clear to you that if God puts somebody and, uh, cause you're not going to be accountable for someone and not know it. Uh, that just, it's just like, just like business. You can't be, there will not be a reveal on something you don't even know about plain and simple. And so, and I'll just Jeff, take a business example for one thing they say in business, they say, you cannot write a review on somebody um, or give somebody something on their review that one, they didn't know about it. They didn't know that was their job. They didn't know it was part of their uh, uh, accountability. And not to mention that you never talked about it before, but they can't just come in with new something. So I don't think there's anything to you. You would know if God says, look, I need you to be responsible for this person right here, this soul. Uh, and, and you, and, and I think it's clear at that point. So I don't, I don't think there's any guesswork here. Uh, and, and you may want to be accountable to someone or feel you are. I don't, I don't even think it's a feeling. I, 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 my personal belief is that if, if there's a strong tug in your heart, that this soul out here is your, your responsibility, your accountability, then it is. And, and it could be a number of, number of different reasons. Because this soul out here that, that you need to get a word of God to, this may be their last day on earth, you know, and no one knows it. You don't know it. And so now you got to go take this word to these people and make sure now you are accountable because you will never see them again. And you may be the last Christian that they ever, the last believer they ever see. And, and then it's on you at that point. You know, so I, I don't, I don't know the exact answer to your question. Maybe Pastor Bob could, could weigh in on it, but I think that uh, just looking at the structure here uh, in, in the Bible, God put rulers over his people and there's <laughs> There's not a lot of people out here. The, the model looks, look at, look at, we're just talking about Moses, but you look at the model, God's people were in Egypt. They needed a leader. So God put a leader over his people. It's not like today, there's a lot of leaders running around trying to find people. I need, I need a church. I need, I need followers. That's not the model. There's a lot of leaders running around looking. No, God makes sure that his people, his sheep, you know, have the shepherd. And you'll know specifically. And, and I, if you and if you had any questions about it, uh, I would I would speak to to my leader and say, look, I, I'm, I'm feeling or I'm, I feel like God is, you know, I have some responsibility or something with this person and, and their and their and with their salvation or with, with their Christian walk. Um, and I've had those conversations. Okay, thank you. All right. Any uh any other questions or uh, someone's put a note here uh, uh sister smith what are you saying uh, Cynthia smith is that you oh, I, a little bit louder please that's a little bit better Let me move that one. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. So I muted that one. Okay. okay. So what? Uh, I just I feel like if God is saying, "Where is, you know, my sheep?" Because He knows everything. I think what He would be telling us is, "Go get him. Go get her." You know, He He I, in the Bible we've always seen Him ask a question mm-hmm. when He's really making a statement. Because exactly. he doesn't need us to tell him anything. So his inside of his questions are statements uh-huh. and, uh, you know, orders, commandments. Inside yeah. of his questions are commandments. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when he's saying, where's my, you know, it's like, what did you do with that person? Go find them or go get my, you know, something. Else. What did you do with whatever it is in yeah. this situation? I think it's telling you to address it. It's oh. just my two cents. No, I, I, I think I think, it's, I think it's very I think it's a very good point uh, because he's not asking questions that he don't know the answer to. That's for sure. But it is making 
know what to do. And I think there's a statement there, and I look at them as being being rhetorical. Um, but um, yeah, I agree. I'm looking at uh, uh, Jeremiah 13. It's not even in context, but um, I think I was looking, looking at it earlier. Uh, it says, lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. And then it says, where is the flock that was given thee, that beautiful flock? Uh, and that's in Jeremiah 13. I may, may get the context of it um, next week, but that's one thing I referred to. But I think that God's not asking you for information. It, it, he's making a statement and we got to understand what, what exactly what he's saying. That's an excellent point, uh, Sister Smith. Uh, any, anyone, anyone else? Question or comment? All right, again, so, so next Sunday, Lois, we'll uh, we want to take a deeper dive uh, because this is the, uh, again, this is the last thing he said. And he, he kind of boils it all down to two things um, when he says submit. Um, uh, obey and, and submit, and uh, we got to all understand exactly what that means. Uh, those are things we have to do. Uh, we have to get that right. And it it seems like um, it's kind of passive. It's not really a lot of action, but it takes a lot of work. Just like we talked about, I guess the verse before it, we talked about sacrifice. Well, it's not the yeah. It takes a lot of work to to be a living sacrifice. And so when we're talking about Obeying and submit takes a lot of work internally, uh, but we all got to get there. And that's and, and what's important here again, this is the these are the last two things he says, <laughs> and then he says, and you're gonna read about it. I mean, so this is it. This, this, these are the last two things. So let, let's look at that and, and um, let's look at the last part of this verse, this verse really close to make sure that we got it nailed down. That we obey them, have to rule over us, and submit ourselves. Submit ourselves. All right. Uh, any questions or comments before turning back over to Minister Harper? Didn't want to miss anybody, but uh, certainly we're going to revisit this again next Sunday, Lord's will. Um, all right, uh, back to you, Minister Harper. Thank you, all everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for that insightful lesson. Uh, and then at this time, we'll have the last word from our pastor, Elder Bobby Ladd. Actually, I'm going to give the last words to Pastor John today. All right. Thank you. Wonderful lesson. Wonderful lesson. Um, thank you, Pastor Daryl, for being led. Um, I, I mean, it just, we all, we all know the, the, the men of God that God has put over us. Um, <laughs> I mean, we are just so, so blessed. Um, what brought it home for me the most was, the um the, the they don't sleep the the whole definition of, of watching over our souls is just i mean that's just so powerful and uh, and it does give us so much confidence moving forward knowing that we have men of god are praying for us and they they care for us and i, I was even thinking about how you know and i'm not i'm not against having you know a five 20,000 people in your church or something like that. But, you know, having somebody watch over me specifically, like call out my name before the Lord, you know, there's some value in that. And I just, I just thank the Lord um, that I have, I feel like I got a, a church full of folks calling out in the name of Jesus. Like, you know, not, maybe not every day, but oh, yeah, you know, every day. when the Lord leads them, they are calling out my name. Like they not they not just giving some general prayer for the masses. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are specifically bringing up me to the throne. Amen. And uh, I mean, I just, I mean, I feel, I feel like it puts God in a more surgical position, you know, because we know that <laughs> that, that, that by faith, God God activates, you know, when, when we call on His name, like we don't know how the game. Pastor Bobby used to tell me, we don't know how the game is set up perfectly, you know, perfectly, but we know that prayer gets God involved, you know, and, uh, and I mean, but, but, but to know that people are calling out my name, I mean, how many of y'all can, can, can say, amen, somebody's calling out my name. Yeah. When I was about to slide off the road, somebody was calling out my name. When I was amen. sick on the deathbed, somebody's coming out, calling out my name. Amen. When, my when my child is going through it. 
Somebody yeah. calling out my name. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Pastor Bobby. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Daryl. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, ministers. I just I just thank y'all for um standing in the gap for, for missing meals for me. Mm. Um I, I don't know how many meals have been missed for me, but I just I just want to say thank you. And that's why you're you're worthy of double honor. Amen. That's I. That's why you're worthy uh, of, of some of this, mm-hmm. and I and I I know that we have we have men of God in our church that won't let it go to the you know they they fight they fight <laughs> trying Amen. to you know stay in that humble spot with God. They don't let it go to their head, but just thank you, mm-hmm. thank you, yes. and all of us, and, and you know how many hearts are yielded to to this this thanks. Mm-hmm. You know how many hearts are yielded to this thing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for all that you do for us. So we just, we just, I, I mean, that, that's really what, what, uh, <laughs> to me, <laughs> meant the most to me. Um, uh, I don't know what time we're going to get started on the other end, but, uh, but, but we just, we're just going to say a quick prayer and then we'll leave it in uh, the ministers, Minister Harper's hands. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for the men of God that you placed over us, God. The prayer warriors you put in position to make sure that we're protected, provided for, and live fruitful lives, God. We just we ask, Father, that you bless us with the with the understanding to do our part to render them double honor, God, to give them to to, to pay them. Um, in love and, and, and shower them with our affection, God, uh, knowing, Father, that, that, that they have they have given us so much value <laughs> um, by st- by missing sleep, God, by staying up late, Father, by by missing meals, God, by laboring in prayer, Father. So we just we just want to say. Um, thank you, God, for putting them in place, God, and give them, give them strength, God, to endure, Father. Give them energy, Father. Um, give them patience, God. Bless them to be able to, to continue to do your works, Father. We just love you, and we, we just thank you for them, Lord. It's all by your power that all these things take place, Father. So we thank you, God for being so faithful to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all very much for sharing your faith and time with us. And uh, we hope to see you very soon. Uh, Thursday nights we have our uh, Bible study and immediately following our services today, we hope to see you on Facebook on our, and uh, you can listen to our pastor there. Have a great and wonderful day. Thank you. Be blessed.